Secondary break, preview show, Carolina, Alabama, Sweet 16. I'm Graham Bunn, former Division I point guard. Got my, my partner in crime, Mr. Zach Talitsky, UNC alum. All things sounding board for Carolina basketball. We are a review show. If you are just finding us, we did have a bunch of people watch the show, uh, and we're getting some new people kind of joining the family. Welcome. Uh, I've been actually given the very first pat on the back that I've ever gotten for this show of asking people to like and subscribe. So uh, if you do subscribe, it's not going to change your life at all. You'll just get a little notification like, hey, if you want to check out this video about Carolina basketball, it's up. <laughs> I'm learning all types of new things about the way YouTube works. So when we started this, it was just two guys that love Carolina basketball, and that's still at its core exactly what it is. Uh, we never thought anybody would watch, but we are grateful for it. I know that I am. And, yeah, welcome to the show. Preview show Sweet 16. And uh, we, we're going to start the show off with some good news. Uh, I feel like no matter what happens on Thursday, well, I guess I guess we could decide to push it or just not do a recap show. Uh, but the recap show might look a little different uh, Thursday or Friday. Yeah, yeah, we'll get to do it in person together. I'm not sure how that's going to work, but uh, it should be yeah. fun. In studio, <laughs> hopefully it's just uh, two guys cheers and a couple beers. <laughs> and, uh, hey, guys, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to the regularly scheduled program at the Elite Eight. Yeah, I can't wait to get out there, and uh, and hopefully we'll play well Thursday and and uh, get to play Saturday too. Yeah, what time do you land? I was looking at these games, and anybody on the East Coast, uh, Zach is in Charlotte, and obviously Charlotte was good to Carolina and the Tar Heels this this previous weekend, but the tip is what nine thirty nine Eastern Standard Time on Thursday, and you know people got to work on Friday. That's a late tip. It's a late tip. I'm gonna have to get caffeinated. Uh, there you go. But, I'll have I'll have you all stocked up and ready to go. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think the um, I think the Arizona game is the first game at like seven, and then we're on at mm -hmm. nine thirty. But I think I landed like two something. Nice. Yeah, we'll figure out uh, where we're going to watch because I am I I really want to catch some of that Clemson Arizona game. Like that's gonna be, um, yeah. We'll have tickets. We'll be there. Oh, okay. We'll we'll be in the we'll make it in time. You think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I meant like I was gonna pull over waiting for you and watch it on my phone. <laughs> no, no, we'll be there in time. We'll be in the building. <laughs> nice. All right. Clemson, Arizona tips at 409. We are slated after that 639. Uh obviously there's other games going on. San Diego, Connecticut, Illinois, and Iowa State. It's gonna be a great. I mean, once you hit the Sweet 16, they're all good games. So uh, but we are most interested in Carolina, Alabama. Now, one of the things that I thought about what we could do for this show, and we'll, we'll keep this brief. We wanted to make sure we got a little bit of content up there for anybody that's interested or gearing up for the game. We've covered Carolina. You know, we kind of know what we need to do, and, and we can cover it briefly, to win the game. What I thought would be interesting is to discuss what we need to take away from Alabama or what we need Alabama to do in order for us to put ourselves in a position to win. It's March Madness. Nothing is guaranteed. It's not like, hey, if we force 20 turnovers, we're going to win the game. You could force 20 turnovers and they shoot 63% from three and you still lose. So nothing is a guarantee. But I figured we would start with Alabama. Like, what do you think we need to do or limit them uh, from your knowledge? If you've done any research, I've done a little bit on their last 10, which I think is a really good metric going into games like this because Oregon is a perfect example. Completely different team at the end of the season than it was in the beginning of the season. So, um, well, how are you feeling about Bama? Yeah, I feel okay about Bama. I think it's a decent matchup for us in, in the Sweet 16. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I think one of the strengths that we have as a team is we can play both fast and slow, mm -hmm. um, and uh, maybe more so even than in some other years. I think we're more adaptable to different styles. We can we can muck it up and grind it out with people, but I, I think we're not also not afraid to get out and and run and play in a faster tempo. Um, but I think, you know, in playing Alabama, they're, you know, number one scoring team in the country. Everybody knows that number three in offensive efficiency. Um, I think they're, um, top 20 in shooting, um, free throws, three point percentage and two point percentage. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, just good offensive team, um, good shooting team. Um, also was looking at some of their stats today, uh, their offensive rebound rate, they rebound 33% of their misses. Yeah, uh, which is, I think, number 25 in the country. And so when they're shooting that many threes, there's going to be a bunch of long rebounds. Right. 
and they're very adept at getting those lo long rebounds. And, you know, and as we all know, that's probably the most dangerous time in terms of trying to stick to shooters and get open mm -hmm. threes. Sure. So I, I, I think really those long rebounds, um, being quick to the ball, getting, um, getting those because if we can if we can get those we get out and run and i think we'll get some transition points if they get to those there's going to be some dude standing in the corner uh, wide open on a scramble play and i think that's you know that's where they're they're really dangerous and so i think that that rebounding stat and trying to mm -hmm. control them on the offensive boards is going to be be huge for us i think Har harrison ingram all year has been awesome at those types of boards he just comes flying yeah. in and he's fast and quick, but I think our guards are also going to have to really pay attention and contribute and, and box guys out and, and be quick to the ball on those, those long rebounds. So that would be one I, that I'm, I'm sort of keying on. Yeah. Uh, so I looked up their last 10 games. They're six and four in their last 10, they're four and four in their last eight, but we'll, we'll, we'll stick to the last 10. And in the losses, just to piggyback this and, and every team is like this or every team, ideally would like to be like this to in incrementally get better at certain things as the year goes on. They're not a great defensive team. They've had certain games where they've played well defensively and who knows, you know, what goes into that. There's anom anomalies. A broke clock is right twice a day, but I do believe they're a better defensive team now than they were most of the season. And there's a reason they're in the sweet 16, but in their losses, you know, they, they hang their hat on offense, and you just reeled off the stats of why that is a proven fact. And their loss says March 15th to Florida, they shoot 24% from three on six of 25. The They lose to Florida again. Well, that was the, the semis. On March 5th at Florida, they shot 21% from three. And if you take Mark Sears out of it, they shot like 7%. He was four of six. Uh, Tennessee, at home, they shoot 24%. And then the only game that they shot it decently – uh, from three was at Kentucky. That's a tough place to play. They were six to 17 for 35%. So in their losses in the last 10, they're, they're averaging about 24% from three. Yeah. We tend to defend the three well, and when we don't, we lose. So I thought that that was going to be one piggyback your point. And then the other point that I, that I looked up in research, which I was actually pretty proud of this because we are, I think one of the better teams in the nation at scoring from the free throw line. Mm -hmm. And we've done a much better job. I think our team is is roughly about 74, 75% on the year uh, from the free throw line. Now, they are – they average uh, – let's see. They average over 20 fouls a game, Bama does. And they are 4-10 and 10 when they foul more than 20 times. They've only won one game. They've only lost one game when they didn't foul over 20, uh, on, over 20 times. So if we can kind of mesh those their deficiency in our strength, they foul a lot. We get a lot of points from the free throw line. I think we'll be sitting really pretty. Those are my two big major points. Getting points from the free throw line, we average about 17 makes a game. If we can make that, because they foul a lot, if we can make that 19, 20, we get 20 points from the free throw line, and we defend the three decently, I think we're going to be in a really good spot to win this game. I agree. I had made a similar note on on the fouling because I, I saw you know a similar stat. They they also take a lot of free throws, so they give up a lot of free throws and take a lot of free free throws, which is no surprise when you know you're a top eleven whatever adjusted tempo team, right? You're gonna get up and down. There's gonna be a lot of fouls called. So I think how this game is officiated um, is gonna matter, and you know not only the volume of the of the calls, but I think where those calls go from like individual players and you know, oh, does, sure. any, yeah. does anybody have to sit mm -hmm. um you know it's like i mean clemson won the game but but watching that clemson baylor game i feel like every time pj hall got in the game within 30 seconds he picked up another foul and was sitting the whole time and so yeah you know there's always risk i think with with baycott cadeau has been prone i think to get into mm -hmm. some foul trouble i'm sure they'll try to put pressure on rj to defend um, yeah. You know, do any of those guys pick up fouls and then and then, you know, flipping that around. Um, I've not watched them a ton, but but the three or four games I've watched, they're big. Grant Nelson uh, he's transfer, aggressive. I think, from North Dakota. He's a he's aggressive and gets into yeah, foul trouble. Mm -hmm. And so if we're as is. Um, focused on getting the ball into Baycott as we were uh, against Michigan State, which which we should be yeah. um, and force him to defend. 
uh, you know, then, then if we can get put some fouls on him early, I think that really forces them to go deeper under the bench. I don't know that they've got that really great post defender that you're, you're that you're used to Alabama having in prior years. Mm-hmm. Um, and so hopefully we can we can begin to wear them out down low. Um, so they just don't have people who can match up with, with Baycott. Um, yeah. I mean, I I mean they've they got, they, they got some subs, but I, I just don't know that they've really got anybody that can match up with him one-on-one. Um, so I don't know. Maybe they're going to double. It'll, it'll be interesting to see how they play it. Yeah, I mean, they had nine guys in double-figure minutes, so they are mm-hmm. deeper than us. I'm going to clean up this stat here because this this is something I, I found really interesting, and I, I don't think or I don't know if I eloquently – explained it well enough so when bama fouls less than 20 times in a game they've only lost once so that's kind of like the benchmark for them of like okay let's keep our fouls under 20 because they've won every game except for one in which they've been able to keep their fouls under 20 fouls so you know i I think that that's not necessarily has to happen for us to win but i do think you know the numbers don't lie in a lot of regards and the way that we shoot free throws i think that that aligns really well with something that we can kind of capitalize on so those those two things defend the three don't let them get hot because they are i think they feed on offense and luckily you said it earlier where you know we can muck it up or we can play fast pace one of the things that i also think that we've kind of this is a new thing for me and correct me if i'm wrong is we've been able to win games this year where the defense was kind of like our calling card like we hung our hat on that game on the defensive end and so yes i think we can score the ball with the best of them i don't think alabama has as much as much upside or has shown as much upside on the defensive end as carolina has and i think that we're much closer offensively in the two teams than we are defensively in the two teams so if you average those out i think again there's a reason we're a one seed and they're not. So I, I think that that's going to be and play a large role in the game as well. I agree with that, and and I think that's been true all year. Uh, hopefully it, it, it continues to be true one more game. Yeah, I um, mean, it only has to not be true once now, right. which, is ter- which is terrifying. And look, and we know they're going to take a ton of threes, and it's always dangerous. I always worry about those teams in the tournament because um, it only takes one game, and you know you get hot, and they bank a couple in, and you know crazy stuff can happen. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I mean they're they're going to put pressure on us. They're going to put pressure on us for forty minutes. Um, I'm hoping the fact that we came out you know a little bit flat against Michigan State, and you know they they punch us in the mouth helps us in this game, and that. You know, we come out in the first four minutes and establish the tempo that we want and establish the game that we want. Um, and hopefully mm-hmm. Hubert doesn't have to work that hard to remind them, you know, what had happened in the prior game. And, and that doesn't become a habit. Um, we, you know, it's just you don't want to have to continually fight from behind. No, definitely not. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, I Obviously, the later you dig into the rounds, the more susceptible you are to not being able to dig yourself out of a hole because the teams that are still alive, they only get better. You know, they're not going to allow those types of comebacks the the further you get into the tournament. One thing that I was surprised about, I looked it up, and this is kind of like it's a double-edged sword. It's kind of relieving in, on one hand. They don't turn the ball over a ton. And mm-hmm. for, for a team that gets up and down, and I guess, you know, their offensive numbers reflect it, but... I would have thought they they averaged more turnovers. I was looking at their losses. Like, you know, one game they had eight turnovers. That's great. 13 is the magic number for me. Uh, 12 and another. They did have 16 at Kentucky. But the thing that was kind of relieving is, okay, I don't think that we have to turn them over. Like, we're, we're not dependent on getting steals. If we can play solid defense and contest shots, I think we're, you know, I think that's what we need to do. I, I don't think we need to get out there and get, 10 steals in order to win the game. Yeah, I think this is about forcing them to execute in the half court. You know, not letting them get easy stuff in transition. Yeah. Um, you know, forcing them to to you know, either if if they take quick ones, make sure they're contested quick ones. Um mm-hmm. and then and then we've got to rebound. I mean, we've got to be demons on the defensive boards. Um and just make sure that they're not getting multiple looks. Um, Cause then I think that really does open up uh, the offense for them. Um, and then if they do crash, you know, and we get those boards, we got to run and get some easy wins ourselves. I don't think we're f- afraid to do that. We're not going to just try to walk it up to like 
control tempo and slow pace, I think we'll go when we have the opportunity to go. But I agree. I don't think this is about being risky on defense to get steals and turnovers. I think this is about being solid and um, defending the first thing. Because, you know, the, the good thing is, like, unlike playing Virginia, where you know you have to def- defend 30 seconds of clock, yeah. here you're really trying to defend 10 seconds of clock because that's when they want to shoot it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so oh, it's yeah. defending, you know, that first and second action, making mm-hmm. sure that they don't get anything easy and then and then no second chance points. Yeah, I, I was trying to look this up as we were talking because I, I, I wasn't sure second or third team, but Sears, uh, obviously the the engine that makes that team go, looks like he was named – uh, third team or second team All American. Um, so I, you know, RJ, he and RJ, that's going to be a great matchup. But do you think we'll put Elliot on him to start the game? I do. Okay. I do. Um, and I and and I think this could be a a Trimble and Withers game. Um, Again, I think they yeah. both. I think they both could come up really big in this game. I I I, I could see Trimble and and Elliot getting. Uh, pretty similar minutes, and mm-hmm. it's as high paced and up and down as I expect this game is going to be. We we need them both to play. I don't think we want either. You know, we don't really want people playing thirty plus minutes in this game. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just think for stretches we're going to want Tremble on Sears. And if Sears gets going and starts starts feeling it, yeah, I would expect mm-hmm. Hubert to to put him on imme- uh, on him immediately, like we did against uh, you know Carrington at, at Pittsburgh and and. Um, but, but I, it wouldn't shock me if Cadeau starts on him. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and again, like I'd rather get a, a foul or two on Cadeau than a foul or two on RJ. And so I think it just kind of makes sense. Yeah, definitely. I, I should have known this. Obviously, um, you know, my name was tossed around for these. I didn't know this consensus status for a player to be named to the All American team. There's four major publications that he was named to the second team by uh, the Associated Press and Sporting News. He was selected to the third team by the NABC. So he is a consensus uh, All-American for Alabama. So really good player. Hopefully we can keep him in check. You never want anybody going nuclear in these games because that changes the dynamic of things. But I do think that we've seen good guards and we've done a good job on good guards. And I think that the team's up for the task. I I love that the team is stronger defensively than it has been in recent memory. It, it makes me less reliant on we need every shot to go in. Like when we made that title run, I don't know the the defensive numbers, but I just remember thinking, okay, uh, Caleb Love's going to get 20 shots up. We need him to make eight, nine of them, and we need Brady Maddock to be eight of 11. <laughs> and RJ's going to be RJ. I, I don't feel... That way, the only thing that I worry about offensively is if Cormac Ryan and Harrison are both extremely off at the same time, then I'm going to be sweating bullets and not fun to be around. But I, I think that the team has done an amazing job of being able to cover up some deficiencies on the defensive end. So uh, I think that'll pay big dividends in a game like this where the team really hangs their hat on. We're going to outscore you. Yeah, I mean, defense should be more reliable than offense. And I think that's why historically people have said defense wins championships is because Mm -hmm. it should travel better, um, Mm -hmm. you know, in a building where everyone's a little bit uncomfortable. And um, and I know this is a basketball arena, unlike the Final Four, so the sight line should be good and all that. But still, um, you know, there's a bit of an adjustment. And so hopefully – you know, if, if the shooting is a little bit off, uh, our defense carries the day. Um, also think, you know, and, and, and maybe that maybe I just haven't watched them enough and this is untrue, but I don't know that they've got a post presence on the offensive end that's as good or as reliable as Mondo. They and, do not. And, and so, you know, when things get tough and you need a basket and, um, you know, it's also, I think, a fairly reliable way to get open looks for your perimeter guys, right? You don't have to create with sets, you know, if, they, if you force mm-hmm. them to double because they can't guard him one-on-one. Um, he's really been passing the ball out of those doubles uh, well. And I think the team, because we've been seeing it so much all year, should be prepared for that. Um, mm-hmm. uh, so I, I just feel like we've got more options than they do. Um, yeah. That mean we're going to win the game. Uh, we're still sure. going to have to make open open looks. Uh, and they're going to they're going to pressure us the entire game and force us to defend the entire game. 
uh, but I think we're up for the challenge, maybe more so this year than than any other year I can remember. You know, there's some other years where this type of matchup was really, really worrying me uh, mm -hmm. for the reasons you said, where it just didn't feel like we locked in on defense the way this team does. Uh, but but hopefully they they do on 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 Thursday, and then and then hopefully you know Alabama just doesn't make everything. Sometimes you can play great defense, and right? It's just not your day. Um, yeah, definitely. All right, uh, score prediction. What do you got for me? Crypto Arena, Los Angeles, and you are in route. Uh, you leave. I guess you don't leave for another day. You got some time before you you get out. When will you start like really gearing up and being like, all right, man, it's go time. I'm going to the Sweet 16. Uh, I'll start gearing up like Thursday. I'll wake up Thursday morning and and start getting excited. Um, there you yeah, go. yeah, pack and and uh, mm -hmm. get get my game face on. Um, make, entire. Make sure Entire flight, I'm gonna have to find ways to distract myself. This is a long flight, and and uh, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll be getting nervous. Yeah, well, let me know what you need upon arrival. I'll, I'll be there with a sign, a welcome <laughs> basket, whatever you need. Anything, good luck, four leaf clover, you know, rabbit's foot, just anything we need to get these heels into the elite eight. Yeah, anything. I uh, try to bring my lucky shoes. The whole, the whole, the whole bit. Um, mm -hmm. I have us winning 90 to, to 80. Nice. I had 91, 83. Okay. Yeah. 91, 83. And yeah. not that it's going to cruise, but I felt like this would be of any of the games that we've had so far uh, in tournament play. And, and I'm including the ACC tournament uh, and, and maybe not the, the first round game, but the, the one and done tournament play, when we, we had three in the ACC tournament, this will be our third year. So out of the six games, I thought that this would be a game that we could distance ourselves and maintain. You know, I'm sure they'll make runs. It's a game of runs. They're really good offensively. It's the Sweet 16. It's an NCAA tournament game. Uh, but I, I felt like this team has shown the propensity to maintain a lead in these scenarios. So I, I had 91-83. The line is four and a half right now mm -hmm. so and then i'll let me i'll pull up the over on if, if i were betting i would i would well obviously on based on my projection i would i would take us on that mm -hmm. and give me a guess on the over under it's got to be like 170 173.5 it's a lot <laughs> yes yeah, a, a lot there's a lot of points i would take the under on that but you know uh, I as long as we win 91 83, I'll be good. Yeah, I would probably take the under too. I mean, we're not afraid to get up and run, but I feel like defensively we can hopefully hold them in check and, and keep them below their average. Um, yeah, also, yeah, like, I don't, I don't ahead. know, there's a lot of great defensive teams in the SEC this year. I mean, there's a lot of SEC teams that that had very good offensive metrics, you know, Kentucky, Florida, mm -hmm. obviously, Bama. Um, but not necessarily great defensive metrics. And so my hope is that they're not used to, you know, someone playing and getting into them and and, mm -hmm. and making them as uncomfortable as I'm hoping we'll be able to. Yeah. I mean, it was early in the year, but Clemson beat them at Alabama and the, you know, ACC SEC challenge. So, uh, and, and kudos to the ACC outside of Virginia kind of faltering out of the starting blocks there a little bit. We got, four teams in the sweet 16 and three within a nine mile radius in the research triangle park. You know what I mean? Carolina state and Duke, I think it's like the first time in 20 years they've all made the sweet 16, which is amazing. Yeah. I'm so sick of this. The ACC is no good narrative. Um, there's something wrong with the metrics. We've talked about this before. Way too much attention is being paid to these games in, in November. Mm -hmm. um, and they're locking these conferences in these bands, you know, starting in late December, early January. And then, and then um, certain conferences can do no wrong and teams that go, you know, 500 or below 500 or, you know, super high in the net score. And then you have other conferences uh, because their net rating isn't high enough. You know, it's, it's just, it's just garbage. And it clearly yeah. doesn't, um, it's not accurate. Um, yeah. Well, I think we made a strong statement. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that said though, I'm sort of talking outside of both, both sides of my mouth. Um, the, it's interesting. The only top 14 team not to be in the sweet 16 is Auburn. Yeah. I mean, uh, all of the and, ones, and the, all the of the twos, 
Yeah, all the ones and all the twos just from the seating standpoint, which uh, it's been a crazy long time since that's happened. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I think in a lot of ways, you're right. They got it right on, on certain occasions. But that being said, as far as bubble talk and amount of teams that get in and maybe they get a, a deeper seed, maybe there is an ACC or a Power 5 that gets a 13-14. Who knows? You know, I, I can't remember the last Power 5 that was a 14. But. Uh, I do believe the ACC was undervalued, and I think it made it another strong case. We've performed really well in uh, the NCAA tournament in recent memory. So, Pitt, you know. Pitt deserved to get in. I mean, if you yeah. just you, you don't have to be a basketball genius to watch that team play down the stretch of the last you know couple months of the season. That that was an NCAA tournament team. And by yeah. the way, the Big East I think also um, wasn't treated fairly to only get three teams in. All three of those teams are obviously in the Sweet Sixteen. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know who the, the next people up are is probably St. John's or, or Seton, Seton Hall. Hall, Seton Hall, um, could have gotten in, but both of those teams, I think could have made some noise in the tournament. Um, you know, obviously the SEC and the mountain West have not performed well. Uh, so I don't know. I'm just tired of it as a, as a lifelong ACC fan. We're just not getting near the respect we deserve. Um, well, speak your mind, speak your mind. Do, <laughs> do you, um, <laughs> Should, should we do a quick, quick round robin of picks of the, of the remaining games? Who, who do you yeah. have? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I'll pull up the. I got the Thursday I, games. Go ahead, I Clemson, got, Arizona. Who you got? Uh, I'm gonna go Clemson. All right, I'm, I'm taking a, Zona. I'm gonna go Clemson. I'm I'm hoping that that PJ Hall and and Shefflin can stretch the floor a little bit, make, make Ballo come out and defend, make him uncomfortable out there. Um, so I don't know. I think that could be a good matchup. I feel like Clemson's playing, playing really good ball right now. It's definitely going to be a good matchup. One of the things, and again, I'm not jinxing this. I have no idea if we'll even get past Alabama. So, you know, to each his own. Out of that, we play the winner of that game if we do advance. If we do advance, not to jinx it. Who would you rather see, though? Because Clemson knows us in and out. And, and not that Zona won't scout it and scout it well. I'm sure they will. But there's another thing when you play somebody twice and you're in their conference and P.J. Hall's guarded Armando Baycott 10 times in his career and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's the familiarity that goes along with being an underdog and playing someone in your conference outside of playing Arizona that, you know, outside of Caleb Love saying, hey, uh, you know, here's the scout. He likes to do this or he's susceptible to left shoulder, blah, blah, blah. Who? Because uh, I'd almost rather see Arizona there. I want to play Arizona. I think okay. it'd be a fun game. Um, I, my, my guess is they're going to have more fans out there than we will. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I want the Caleb matchup. Um, I know they're supposed to be the better team, but that's OK. Like, like. I don't want to. We don't need to shy away from them. Let's 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 go. Let's go have it. Well, and, they're a two seed. We're a one seed. Eh, yeah, exactly. They're a better team. Uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like we're not ducking anybody. I just think nah, it'd be a fun, nah. I think it'd be a fun matchup, and so I'm hoping Arizona. Um, okay. Yeah. I think you're going to get your wish. I think you're going to get your wish. <laughs> uh, San Diego, UConn. You think anybody's got a chance at UConn right now? I do think somebody does, but I don't think it's San Diego State. I mean, this is a rematch of the national title game right here. Yeah, yeah. Well, talk I love about Ladee. familiarity. I, lo I love Ladee. He's a great player. He's improved a ton. Maybe maybe most improved player I've seen this year. Um, and I think he is, it'll be interesting. I think he's also can shoot to so maybe try to pull Klingon away from the basket some. So I don't well, know, he, can, maybe, maybe, he can take it off the glass and go the whole way. I mean, yeah. he, he definitely gives you – he's undersized five, but he gives you something that not many players left in the tournament can give you. Yeah, so I I don't know. It'd be interesting. I I could see San Diego State at least making it a game and, and keeping it a bit tight. I mean, they they've had no game pressure through two games at all. Um, but I, I still think UConn's got too much for them. Yeah, you see Danny Hurley walk in and it was like, hey, let's just keep smacking these these people. And I was like, man, somebody please beat these guys. <laughs> like, did he say they were bulletproof? Yeah, yeah, like, come on, man. And then someone made the Teflon joke, and he was like, yeah, man, we just keep smacking these people. I'm like, oh, man, all right. Uh, we we talked about Alabama, Carolina. Illinois, Iowa State's going to be, I mean, Fascinating. I don't know. Fascinating. You know, we won't be able to see it because, uh, you know, we'll we'll be at the game. Maybe we'll catch the second half somewhere close. We may have to record that one. Yeah, and maybe not get on our phones. I have no mm -hmm. idea. But that's going to be an amazing game. Uh, who you got there? I'm going to go Illinois. 
Same. Um, I was yeah. going to say the same thing. I've been really impressed with them, both in the Big Ten tournament and then through this run. I just think they they have, and I know Iowa State's great, and they turn people over. Great defensively, number one team in the country. They destroyed Houston, mm. uh, so it's it's not easy to take Illinois. But but I just really like Shannon and Damask, and um, you know they've got some, some big bigs inside, and so I think they just have enough offensive talent that they're going to be able to score and maybe score more than than what would make Iowa State comfortable. Uh, and then it's going to put a lot of pressure on Iowa State's offense, and, and I think eventually that's going to carry the day. Yeah, I think uh, Terrence Shannon is the most gifted outside-inside combination play, wing player left in the tournament. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. that guy that guy can do it all. So uh, getting him back and, again, you know, conversation for a different time about what he's dealing with, what the university is dealing with. But just as a pure basketball player, uh, especially offensively, he is really gifted, and he changed the dynamic of their team when he came back from his suspension. All right, Friday, NC State Marquette. Uh, Marquette. Same. Uh, I, think the, the, I think the, the run ends. Off. Yeah. Gonzaga-Purdue. This is going to be a lot better of a game than a lot of people thought when the tournament started. I've seen Gonzaga play now both their games, and they look great. Now Purdue I mean, they has looked just strong too. Blitz Kansas in the second half. That was an impressive half of basketball. Yeah, they uh, they undressed them mm-hmm. immediately too. Yeah, I I'm tempted to take Gonzaga. Mm. I'm taking Edie. I'm taking. You're taking Edie. Purdue. Yeah, just uh, he's. He's like, uh, I don't want to say a bigger version of Baycott, which is crazy because he backed up Baycott at IMG Academy uh, in high school. But just the way that teams have to defend him and the guards and uh, even their big, the other, the four-man for them has been incredible during yeah. uh, the the Big Ten run and then also the NCAA tournament. Those are most of the games that I've watched. It's just he attracts so much attention, and I think some of the commentators said it, best when they said look the Purdue's got great players but the whole game is predicated on what Zach Eady does you know how other teams attack him how other teams are going to play him how he attacks the defense that's thrown at him it's all it all comes from the same central focal point of Zach Eady so I, I'm going with the two-time national player of the year I'm gonna go with Zach Eady I think you know the humble pie that they've had in the NCAA tournament the last few years allows them to be like just deadline focus at all times. Like we cannot allow this to happen again. Yeah. I, I, I think that Gonzaga really impressed me with how they attacked Dickinson mm-hmm. and how they Man, put him in the pick. He's been, he's been taking a beat. It's yeah. So I mean, speedy. I mean, <laughs> just so hit, Bill doesn't want him back. They're saying, I mean, just, just how they put him in the pick and roll. And then, you know, Gonzaga has a couple of big guys who can space the floor. I think one's Greg and I forgot the other one. Um, and I think that, that they're going to do the same thing. I think they already have the game plan, you know, against Edie. Uh, and 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 I think that they're going to really make him to, to defend uh, mm-hmm. both both putting him in ball screens um, and, you know, some of those pick and pop pop actions. And this feels like Gonzaga is really clicking and executing a high level in the offensive end. And then, you know, on defense, um, you know, I, I, I feel like Mark Few is going to cook something up uh, mm. It's not going to slow, you know. It's not going to stop Purdue, but but I think they'll be able to to slow down the guards and then maybe just let you know Edie kind of get his, yeah. uh, but but take away the rest of the guards and then and then outscore them. Uh, but I, I, it's to me, it's a it's it's a game that I'm yeah. I'm really interested to watch. Yeah, Watson was the other big there, and just looking at this uh, against Kansas, here are the here's the field goal lines for their team. Uh, talk about efficiency, six for six. 8 of 11, 7 of 11, 7 of 11, 4 of 9, 1 of 2, 1 of 1, 0 of 1. I mean, that is – of 1 guy, man. They'd have let him on the bus. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, so they – yeah, they undressed Kansas. Uh, Now, Kansas not at full speed. And and like you said, a a lot of it was predicated on how Hunter Dickinson guarded the pick and roll. But, yeah, that's going to be a good game. Uh, All right, where are we at? Duke Houston. Dukes look Go, great. Going into the tournament, I would have said Houston all day, every day, but but mm-hmm. Dukes look good. 
I guess I'm going to stick with Houston and, and, Same. and um, I just, over the, the course of the season, you know, I think Houston's strengths have been Duke's weaknesses. Um, and I'm just not sure that Duke can remedy that, you know, in, in on short notice in a game like this, mm-hmm. but, but, you know, that, that opinion is not as strong as it was when I filled out my initial brackets. I mean, I've got to give sure. uh, Duke and Shire yeah. credit. Um, you know, I don't really know what to make of the JMU win. Um, I've not, you know, I, I know mm-hmm. JMU beat Wisconsin soundly. and I know they won 30 games. And so maybe it's as impressive as the score line. I just never really know in these second round games when you get, you know, a, a mid-major um, mm-hmm. higher seed, you know, is it that team was satisfied or, you know, that team just isn't really ready to step up to that level. Mm-hmm. Uh, particularly against a team like Duke, this has got pros all over the floor. I, I feel like right. there, there's just bad matchups everywhere for for JMU. Um, so I don't yeah, know. I mean, maybe. They played in the Sun Belt, and Appalachian State beat them both times this year. So I'm not – and again, I played in the SoCon and the Sun Belt, so I'm not saying that they don't have great players because they do. My point is uh, I don't think that Duke's 40-point win – is something that people need to overreact to and say, all right, they're going to win the national title. There's still a lot of great teams out there. They, they're they going to have their work cut out for them in Houston. Uh, I'm with you. Styles make fights. I, I felt like JMU kind of it got away from them early, and they're just not built to mm-hmm. battle a team like Duke from behind, and it just got worse and worse. You know, it's uh, I, I don't think that Duke is 40 points better than JMU. And again, Appalachian State beat JMU at JMU and also beat them at home in Boone. So uh, I think JMU is a good basketball team, but I don't think that they're anything where it, it's a, a barometer to weigh someone's national title hopes on. Yeah, and 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 Houston, you know, the last couple of weeks, I mean, they took that beating in the Big 12 championship game. Obviously, you know, scuffled a little, a little bit with Texas A&M. I didn't get to watch the end of that game, so I don't know exactly what happened, but maybe closer than you would like. It was uh, incredible. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, you know, maybe they're right for the taking. Um, mm-hmm. but, I don't but, think so. Yeah. All right. Creighton, Tennessee. Man, Creighton's fun to watch. I don't know if you've seen them play. but I, they, are, I, they are fun I to watch. I really like watching Creighton play. And I think I yeah. said this earlier in the season that I thought they were a you know, Final Four caliber type team. But – I think Tennessee's not a great matchup for them. Um, mm-hmm. I think I think Tennessee's got a lot of size and depth um, and can match up with them pretty well. Uh, so I think I'm going to go Tennessee. Yeah, I like Tennessee in that one, but I like it to be a barn burner of a mm-hmm. game, and I'll, I'll be cheering for Creighton. I mean, Creighton undressed UConn earlier on in the year. So on any given night, they can beat anybody in the nation with the style of basketball that they play. And for me as a shooter uh, and the way that they seem to just love one another and cheer for one another and, like, it could be a different guy. You know, a lot of teams have success when you don't really know who's going to be the guy that kills you. You know, a lot of people can look at our team and say, okay, we got to make sure RJ and Baycott don't go nuclear, and if the other guys beat us, they beat us. Creighton's one of those teams where, you know, there's three or four guys that can get you 25. So Mm -hmm. uh, I think they have a lot of success because it's really hard to scout and you don't really know until you're in it. So, yeah, I think it. Uh, I'll go Tennessee, but I think it's going to be a battle, and I, my heart is hoping that Creighton pulls it off. I, I, this really sets up. I mean, that's one of the good things about not having a ton of upsets in the first couple of rounds. Um, really the only right double-digit seed is NC State. They're a high-major team that won their conference tournament. So, I yeah. mean, I think different. I mean, they've got, you know, ACC caliber athletes. They won uh, seven games in 12 days, by the way. That's incredible. That's That's unbelievable, man. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. And they won, they won uh, that last game without um, DJ Horn really having a very good game. I mean, so they, Mm -hmm. they got help from a lot of other places. Uh, But, but anyway, I I think it just sets up for a great round of 16. I'm expecting uh, it's going to be very exciting. A lot of close games Uh, really looking forward to it. And uh, yeah, man, fun doing it in LA. Well, I'll be there with a sign. I'll be picking you up, brother. Uh, you know, text me the info. We'll 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 get everything said over the next day or two. But uh, I am pumped. Go heels. I, I don't know. I'm gonna be a wreck. I don't know what I'm gonna what hoodie I'm gonna wear. Like I gotta figure some things out. My good luck. Maybe I wear my good luck uniform. I don't know. We'll see. 
we'll just bring a whole bag of stuff and then we'll change if we need to. Well, I got uh, more Carolina gear than I probably should have. So if you need anything, you can obviously borrow it, buddy. Go heels, baby. Go heels. <laughs>